Adelaide. Greens leader Bob Brown says a deal on the government's carbon tax is possibly only about two weeks away. It'll be a hot topic as some of the country's most senior politicians and policy makers meet in Melbourne today for a conference looking at managing Australia's growth. Speakers will discuss policies to improve how Australia capitalises on its resources boom. One of the speakers is the Deputy Leader of the Green Senator, Christine Milne, and she is with us in the studio now. Senator Milne, thank you very much for coming in. Now, we've been running, of course, all morning the fact that a, a deal is imminent. How imminent? I know you've been sworn to all sorts of secrecy, but is it close? Bob Brown says it is. Well, I have to say we set ourselves the deadline of trying to reach an agreement by the end of the month with a view to having legislation later this year and a scheme starting on the 1st of July next year. I'd say we are well and truly on track to achieving that. Well outcome. it's the end of the month now. It's so. the end of the month and so as uh, Bob has said we are moving through now. We've gotten through some of the major hurdles and we're now looking at sorting out the detail and so on but I think we'll get there. Addressing the National Press Club yesterday, your leader said it won't be a green outcome. Talk us through that. I mean, what have the compromises that have been reached? Well, the Greens have a view that we are in a climate emergency and we need to be moving rapidly to a decarbonised economy. I think the question of speed is the issue here. We would like to see that transformation uh, very rapidly. Others have a view that it may take longer. So when you come at it from that perspective, you can see there may be differences. But from our point of view, we're negotiating with the Labor government. We're negotiating with two independents. Everybody's views have to be respected. And the great thing about a multi-party climate committee and a minority government scenario is that everybody's views do have to be taken into account, have to be respected, and people have to get compromises that think we can move the agenda forward but actually work for them. So on that basis, it's not going to be everything the Greens would like, not everything the government would like, or the independents, but we will compromise. It's fair to assume that emission target of 25 to 40% put forward by the Greens is, is off the table based on what Bob Brown said yesterday? Well, the issue for us is upward flexibility. Uh, the problem we had before with the government's uh, previous scheme was that it locked in failure because it essentially put a ceiling on action. We wanted to make sure that whatever we agree to now enables us to move to higher and higher levels of ambition over time, and that's been a fundamental thing. Secondly, we said we'd judge this package about on whether it was environmentally effective and economically efficient not perhaps as efficient as we'd like, not as effective as we'd like, but moving in the right direction. So that's where we've been going to. But essentially, we want to see a transformation to 100% renewables as quickly as we can get there. Now, in terms, though, of you're saying everybody's opinion should t be taken into account, we're seeing the idea of action on climate change now almost at its lowest level of support. So how do you counterbalance the fact that Australians seem to be against all of this? Well, I think what Australians are saying is that they want action on climate change, but they want to be sure that it'll be effective. And I think once we're able to come to an agreement and announce a scheme, people will get behind it because people are still saying they want action on climate change. They're not sure that this is the action that they particularly want. We want to persuade them that putting a price on carbon pollution is really important to reducing emissions, particularly from coal-fired power but also that we need complementary measures to really boost renewable energy. And Australians love renewables. Uh, and you've only seen, obviously, around the country with the uptake of solar, for example, just how much people want to be part of this revolution. But there, so are a lot of industries, sure there are a lot of industries who will be hurt by the changes. And if they don't go along and are not persuaded by yourselves and the government, they could be seriously voted out of power. And Tony Abbott is threatening just to, to rescind the whole lot. Well, he's threatening to do that. It's difficult to see how he would achieve that uh, because the Greens are going to have the balance of power in the Senate and even after the next election that will still be the case. So he won't be able to push through a rescission and nor should he be able to in the sense that we have to act on climate change and the business community is now saying what they want is certainty. They need to be absolutely sure that whatever rules are in place are in place so that they can make their investments. I don't think they're going to thank Tony Abbott for destabilising something when we get it in place, especially because they know, if not now, it'll be back next time and next time. And it's going to happen. There is an inevitability. So if we can harness the business effort now saying, OK, we've got a scheme, we're going with it, 
I think it's going to be very difficult for him to destabilise that. Speaking of certainty, there are reports this morning that the committee has reached a $1.5 billion compensation package for the coal industry. Are uh, they on the mark? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to comment on the details of the package. Clearly, we need to move beyond coal. We need to get a transition to renewables as quickly as we can. But we recognise that that can't be achieved overnight. It is transitional. Uh, and again, it's about how quickly we can get there. What do you define as quickly? Bob Brown says he wants the coal industry phased out altogether. What, what would you define as quickly? Well, we certainly do need to get the coal industry phased out as quickly as possible, particularly in terms of energy generation. We've got the technology to go to 100% renewables in the next couple of decades. We need to do that. Our Climate Commission, our leading scientists, have said that developed economies need to be decarbonised by 2040. Now, when you consider we're at 2011, we don't have much time, so we need to get on with it. That means building the renewable energy uh, right now so that it's ready to take over. We can't afford to keep the emissions from coal-fired generators going, but we also need to make sure that there are jobs in communities. That transition in communities is critical as well. Now, the conference today you're talking about, we've seen in international experience that there's been a lot of bipartisan support bipartisan work, not only po politically, but from businesses as well. What is your sense when you're going into a conference like this about how willing businesses and leaders are in terms of coming together about renewables and the future? Well, interestingly, there is now quite a big section of the business community who see enormous opportunities in moving to a low carbon economy. And that is uh, quite often in the small to medium sized businesses who recognise if you invest in innovation, if you invest in energy efficiency, in renewable energy, that is where the jobs of the future are and we certainly need to get some manufacturing going. Of course you have the vested interests who are still heavily entrenched in coal and heavily entrenched in oil and they will fight to keep the old fossil fuel age going as long as they can. That is essentially business is now in the same position as the broader community and it's a question of how quickly we can transition. But smart businesses, even in the old vested interests, are increasingly diversifying and you'll find a lot of those are moving away from coal into gas. Some are moving with an also a portfolio of renewables and I think you're going to see the portfolio of renewables really increase. As part of complementary measures under a carbon tax deal? Certainly complementary measures have been absolutely on the table. Has for, the government uh, been, up, been willing to go to where you are or where, where you want <laughs> renewables to be? Well, I'm not going to talk about uh, where we are in the negotiations, but it wouldn't be a surprise for the community to know that the Greens have argued that just as the government might say we're looking at coal generators, the Greens are saying we are looking at investing in a 100% renewable energy future and a grid that's capable of delivering it. And the carbon price will be? <laughs> <laughs> One last try. Christine Mill, great to see you. Thank you for Thank coming Thank you very in. much. Thank you.